and welcome back to my channel today i want to talk about the fire festival i know everybody's been talking about it and there are two documentaries that have come out one on netflix one on hulu um and i have watched both of them so this is gonna be kind of a little review or recap or just my thoughts on both of them so a lot of the information overlapped on both of the documentaries and um so i'll be kind of chopping it all up and putting it into one okay all right so let's talk about just what was the fire festival festival in general so for me i had not heard about the fire festival until some of the stuff had already happened which was um I think late 2016 or 2017. I don't really remember when it was, but I saw a couple of news articles about it, but that was really it. All that social media stuff they were talking about in both of them, I did not see all of that when it was going on on social media. But then again, I took like a social media break, social media break in like 2017. So, um, that may have been why, but I asked my husband and a couple of other people that I knew and they said they had never heard of it. So this, obviously, I was not their target audience. So um, let's just talk about what it was. So it was supposed to be where these, it was this island off of, um, supposed to be Pablo Escobar's island where it was going to be different artists and it was going to be somewhat of like a Coachella type of festival with artists and different villas and stuff on the beach and just you know a, a kind of a more luxury festival and it was ran by this guy named billy mcfarland and he had partners in the whole thing and one of his partners was ja rule the rapper so i grew up i was born in the 80s grew up in the 90s and 2000s as a teenager in the 2000s so i know all about ja rule <laughs> i know who he is some of you guys may be too young to know but i grew up you know ja rule's popping when i was a teenager when i was younger so last i heard of ja rule he was serving time for like tax evasion or something like that basically what this guy did is he defrauded his investors and uh didn't pay for didn't have the money to pay for any of this stuff he promised he promised all this luxury stuff for these people to attend these festivals and what he called it is a festival for the everyday losers one of the phrases he used in the documentaries and and i guess i'm not a festival person i don't like crowds so this wouldn't be something that i would be interested in anyway but it was really expensive people had spent upwards of eight to nine thousand dollars on tickets and and flights and some people were spending even more than that putting money on their wristbands and just all this extra stuff so basically he defrauded people and when they got there for, to the festival they were uh, li uh sleeping in disaster tents and eating cheese and w white bread sandwiches and stuff so this guy did not live up to what he said he was going to live up to. He was basically lying to everybody and had people working for free and owes a lot of people money. And now he is serving six years in prison, federal prison, which I don't think that's long enough. He defrauded people out of millions of dollars. Six years is obviously not enough to me. And so let's talk about some of the things that um, the initial... Um, Promotion for Fire Festival had a whole bunch of celebrities and um, not a whole bunch of celebrities, a whole bunch of models. And I use that term loosely because today's models are not the models I, I'm used to growing up with. You know, I think they had like Haley, Haley Baldwin and Kendall Jenner and Chanel Iman. I think I saw her in some of the advertisements and a, just a bunch of Instagram models and stuff. So what they were doing was posting those orange, they were posting orange tiles on the Instagram and basically getting the hype around Fire Festival and what it can, you know, what it is. And they paid T Kendall Jenner 250,000 posted on her Instagram, which is just ridiculous. And I'll talk about how I feel about celebrities and other models and the people who endorse Fire Festival in a second, but 
because these people posted this, these uh, Instagram models and celebrities posted this on their Instagram and on the social media, people, it generated interest in it. People were going to go buy tickets and um, they were spending money basically on a festival that didn't even really exist. The idea itself I thought was a good idea. Honestly, I did think the Fire Fest would be a good idea. What he should have done, what Billy McFarlane should have done is... Um, let his app play out. He had an app called the Fire App, which is which was an app where people could book celebrities for like their regular events, like birthday parties and stuff like that. Like you could go on the app and book Ja Rule or Kendrick Lamar or whoever whoever had a contract with the Fire App. He should have let that that app grow and build his money from there, and then had the Fire Festival, and it would have probably worked out. But this dude is greedy and money hungry and all about appearances and just an all, all around scammer. He is Joanne the scammer in white boy form. Okay, he's scammy scam. Prior to um, Fire Festival, he had a app or a credit card called Magnesis, which is basically, that was a scam too. That, that was an aluminum credit card with a magnetic strip on it and basically making people think that they were some sort of fancy pants by having this uh, credit card that really didn't provide too many benefits to people. So that itself was a scam. In the Hulu documentary, he talked about how he'd been scamming folks since he was in uh, kindergarten, talking about how he told, he had one of his classmates when he was in kindergarten saying, you give me a dollar, I'll um, get you a what was he trading crayons or something like that basically scamming people since he was out fresh out the womb so this so scamming and lying that stuff comes second nature to this man and with everything that has gone on in the past decade with bank fraud and white collar fraud it still shocks me that people still get away with stuff like this for as long as they do because this is having to do with a lot of money this isn't like, you know, Trump change. These people are committing serious fraudulent activities and defrauding people out of money. So it is crazy. Um, one of the key points about this uh, fire festival that he tried to pull off, they said he promised that this could be taken care of in six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks to put together a festival. Hell, I can't even put together a party in six to eight weeks. I need at least about two and a half months. Well, I guess that is two and a half months. Well, three months. We'll say three months. I can't do... You can't put together something so massive with only six to eight weeks. And we see one gentleman in the Netflix documentary. He has gray hair. I think his name was Andy. I think is what that's what his name was. And he had worked with um, Billy for five years, I believe is what he said. And, you know, there was one part in this doc in the documentary where Billy caught him. They were having problems paying for the water for the festival. And um, he told him, basically, can I need you to go suck some peen, give somebody fellatio to get this Avion water. I don't know about y'all, but it... Avion water, first off, ain't even that good for you to be doing any kind of fellatio. I mean, y'all could have at least got some Fiji. I mean, if you're going to be doing fellatio, I'm going to need you to get some some Fiji water. Or what's the other one? Essential water or um, there's another water that I, I can't think of off the top of my head. But I'm going to need you to do some up to be going to be doing some performance sexual acts. I'm going to need you to get some water, some water that is better than Evian. Okay. So that was a part that everybody was talking about in regards to the extreme stuff that was going on. And we see throughout both Netflix and Hulu documentaries that there were countless people raising their hand and trying to get Billy's attention, not only Billy's attention, but anybody who would listen. Hey, this isn't going to work. We don't have this. These villas that he keeps talking about, people are going to get off the side of the beach, don't exist, number one. Um, you know, the cash flow, they were having cash flow problems, paying people. All the people who were on the island of the Bahamas weren't being paid. 
and they hadn't been paid. So that there was that there was that issue of paying people. Um, the artists that were supposed to be there to perform, a couple of the artists were Major Lazer, Blink One Eighty Two, um, and there was one more that I, I think I missed, but they had been contacted um, by somebody who made a fake Twitter account, which would he, or not a fake Twitter account, somebody who made a Twitter account basically trying to put those who are involved with the fire festival on blast like this does not exist there was a twitter account there was all the people working for um working with the fire festival there was also somebody who was leaking information from meetings that they were having on a daily basis to a website so there was all these signs that this was a gonna be a disaster that this was not going to work out. And this is when the people who were working in the, on the fire fire app and the fire festival who were working for Billy also booked the festival on the busiest time of the year in the Bahamas, which I think there was something going on, a regatta that goes on every year during that time. And, you know, people had told Billy this wasn't going to work and he continued to move forward with that. And that, <laughs> I mean... So with, with all that being said, because that was the busiest weekend, people, there weren't any cars and hotels and different places for the people to stay during that weekend because it was already booked. People had booked these flights and, or not flights, these hotel rooms and stuff and car rentals way, way in advance. So another person who was involved or another entity that was involved with Fire Festival was Jerry Media. I don't know if you guys are on Instagram, but it, I think it's behind, they're behind the Instagram page, Fuck Jerry. And um, that's somebody, it's, it's, a, it's one guy that was running it initially and then it grew and so they called themselves Jerry Media. So they claim to not know much in, in about what was going on either. They were just kind of partnering with Billy. And, and that was the other piece that kind of threw me for a loop is that all these people who were partnering with Billy McFarland didn't really know what was going on. I can understand the celebrities and because when you're brand ambassador, you don't really know what the intricate details of a product or a company is. It's basically your your manager taking a phone call from somebody on their end saying, we want this person to in, in, you know um, endorse our brand and be the face of our brand or do a commercial or put up, put up an Instagram post or put out a tweet about um, our product and we'll pay you half a million dollars or a quarter million dollars or whatever. And that's kind of where it ends and begins. A lot of times these people, these celebrities and people who endorse them don't really know the intricate details. So I always, I'm kind of on the fence about how much blame to put on uh, Ja, uh, not Ja Rule per se, um, Kendall Jenner and some of the other models that were there. Emily Ratajkowski and Bella Hadid and Haley Baldwin. I don't know the extent of how much blame really goes towards them with now when it comes to ja rule he was a partner with billy mcfarland so that's why it kind of got a little fuzzy for me do i think ja rule knew all the whole picture and the scam and was in on the scam i actually don't think he was i think he got fooled just like everybody else i honestly do now, does that absolve him of any responsibility? Absolutely not. He's still responsible because he put his name in his face and partnered with this person. He should have done his research to know what kind of person this was. Point, case in point, he's named in a lot of those lawsuits um, that have been since uh, filed in regards to the fire festival. So let's talk about some more of the, some more of the fraudulent activity. So this island that was supposed to, supposedly been owned by Pablo Escobar this that was not the island um basically what Billy did and I don't know who else was in 
in um, in on it took a map of one of the islands and cut off like the sandals resort um and posted that on the website and made that seem like that was the island so it's just a lot of fraudulent activity that island that that's not they were just being fraudulent <laughs> let's talk about the people who were actually falling into this trap i don't feel bad for the people who got scammed out of their money because there were so many signs they on the fire festival instagram page people were putting questions on there and they were deleting them they were deleting the questions and there were people saying things like i need to book my flight and i just booked my flight and i don't know where to go i haven't got my confirmation number what's going on with this they weren't getting real answers so if you weren't getting real answers and you you're spending thousands thousands of dollars on stuff on a ticket and travel and things like that and you don't have answers and you still go there anyway you just about as dumb as a box of rocks okay you're stupid and i do not have four or five thousand dollars to throw away on a festival and not be having you know confirmation numbers and things and see real footage of what was going on and there were so many people out there blowing whistleblowing about this festival that a quick Google search or a quick search on Twitter or Instagram, you would have found out this was probably a scam. And these people just didn't care. They want to be in the in crowd. There were so many people on there who were who went out to the fire festival who were social media influencers. And I guess you know I'm not quite hip on that, so. I don't really know what a social media influencer is, but I gather it's somebody who has a ton of followers and basically has a ton of fo followers for doing, you know, something everyday people do. Because there was one girl on there, she's just like a food and travel, um, social media influencer and all about positivity and positive vibes. And I was just like, okay, whatever. The people I feel the most bad for are the locals, the people who were putting in the manpower. There was a lady on there who were in a, a restaurant and had been, you know, trying to make food and prepare for this large number of people coming. And she lost $50,000 trying to pay her employees because Billy never paid them. I don't know if it was her GoFundMe, but somebody raised a GoFundMe or put up a GoFundMe for her and she raised about $175,000. I'm sure she raised more than that. And um, so it looks like she got paid and then some. I hope somebody did a, a GoFundMe for some of those people who did not get paid. And I feel like they were thrown away and forgotten about simply because of their social economic status and because they were black. So for that man to get six years behind that is just ridiculous to me. I think he deserved at least 20 to 25 for the heartache and pain that he caused these people. And I do want to point out that people are dragging Ja Rule for this. And it's like, I can't be mad at people for dragging him because dude, you have already have been in trouble with the law and been in financial trouble for tax evasion or not paying your taxes. I don't know if it was evasion or just not paying your taxes, but you got to do better, bruh. You have got to do better, Ja Rule. Do better. And um, so yeah, this can only happen in America where a young white guy can scam people and people just believe him and he can go on his word and people just trust him and continue to trust him to the end of the earth until things really, when the, the shit really hits the fan. Let's talk about the influence the impact of social media. Social media, I feel like, carries a lot of the blame for this. <laughs> On top of Billy, obviously, but this get this platform, social media has given people the platform to want to be famous and want to pretend and want to act like they have everything together, want to act like they have the perfect body, the perfect marriage, the perfect relationships, the perfect career, the perfect everything that's part of the reason why billy did it he likes you know the attention he likes people to make a big deal out of him and you know he was only like 26 i think so 
you know, this is a big deal. Some 26 year old entrepreneur is creating his own festival. Like that's unheard of. So I think on top of that, I think he does have sociopathic tendencies because he didn't seem during the Hulu documentary, documentary to really have any empathy towards what he had done. He was still kind of delusional about it. And I know a lot of people say, well, he's sick. I don't think he's sick. I think he knows what he's doing. He just doesn't care. That's why I say he's sociopathic because he just doesn't care. He seems to be like, he's still holding on to the fact that what he did was legal. I think he's banned from like uh, ever serving on the board of directors for any company or something like that. And the other thing I want to mention about him is that he, when he got on a bail, when he was indicted on some of the charges at right after the fire festival, when he got on bail, he was still scamming people. He got his homeboy to, to, to be the face of this made up company called NYC VIP access. And they were targeting some of the email people. They were targeting some of the people who were on the email list for the fire festival to try to get them to do meet and greets with Taylor Swift and Beyonce and stuff like that. And these, none of this stuff even existed. So he was still trying to scam people out of money. You think when you're out on bail that you would try to play it as safe as you can. But this dude just simply doesn't care. He just needs to be behind, <laughs> he needs to be under the jail. Cause this man just does not care a man of any other race and any other background, he could not get away with this so easily. He could, he definitely would have served more than six years. If he hadn't been black, we know they would have threw him up under the jail. They would have built a house on top of the jail. They would have built a skyscraper. It would have been over had he been a black man. So, you know, it's just every few years, this something like this happens. So, and we'll, we'll, we'll be sitting here talking about it again. So those are my thoughts and opinions about it. Check out the documentaries on Netflix and Hulu if you haven't already, if you're interested in it. Um, and, you know, leave me a comment. Drop me a comment. Give me a like. Subscribe if you like what you see. And, um, yeah, I'll be back for the next video. Let me know you guys' thoughts on this. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.